A little bird has delivered something to you. Well, it was a carrier pigeon. And I don't know how the, the poor thing must have been on steroids because this was a heavy package. And those pigeons don't have a lot of body weight to them. I don't know how he kept this thing up in the air. But I just recently was delivered by carrier pigeon from one of the cult of cornet members who shall remain nameless. He said, he said in the note, don't use my name. And that's easy because I can't remember it because I've never heard of the guy. Because apparently he is just someone who happened to be around uh, in, in some fashion around the arena. Uh, let's see, they were in Houston, Texas at the Toyota Center. Talking about WWE Raw last Monday, uh, eight days ago as we speak now, August the 1st. Somebody was in the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas, and just happened to pick up the TV formats for the three-hour Raw episode titled Everything's Big Time in Texas. They're titling their shows now on their format. Do you know what Vince McMahon would have done to me or Bruce Pritchard or anybody else that titled the TV show on their format that they handed to him back in the old days? No. I hesitate to think. There possibly would have been some bloodshed. But anyway, the 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 I will say this, I have deduced who the person was who left these formats laying around for someone to carry off because of the handwritten notes on the back of some of the pages and the listing of who the agent was for that match. And I'm not going to reveal that person's identity because I don't want to be responsible for somebody else losing their job in this uncertain financial environment. So they shall remain nameless. It's Paul Levesque, isn't it? It does not say Paul Levesque. Triple I'll H? give you that much. Trips? I didn't I didn't say with trips. Now, wait a minute. But apparently now, and I don't, I don't know how long we'll spend it. It would take me two hours to read this over the air, the entire forum. And there's two formats for the same show. Remember, I, we've talked about formats before, and I said, okay, in a 1997 Monday Night Raw, there was probably, it was a two-hour show back then. Let's say there, there was 12 segments. So that means probably six, seven, eight pages, the formats. There are two formats for the same show. I've deduced that one of them is primarily for the technical crew of, um, of the show because it centers more on the VTRs, the music entrances, the on-cameras, the wide shots, the graphics. So this is a format specifically for the production crew, and for this three-hour program, it's 23 pages long. 23 pages. But there's another format that is apparently primarily for the talent and the wrestling side of things because it has the more match details and the scripts for the promos. And this son of a bitch is 14 pages. So they have 37 pages of information for this one television program. You ever want to know what the writers are doing? There it is. Oh boy, they're earning their money. It, they're definitely, they're writing a lot of words. Before we talk about the actual format, I just wanted to go through <clears throat> a couple of things and I'll read you, but I this cracked me up because this is at the back of the talent format, we'll call it, for lack of a better word. There's a page that says Writer's Pre-Tape Checklist. So apparently all the writers are supposed to go down these bullet points when they're doing pre-tapes to make sure that they are adhering to all of the, I guess, the things that Vince has gotten pissed about in the past. Would you like to hear their bullet points for their checklist on how to do pre-tapes? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first it says backstage bullet points, and then it's got one, two, three, four, so you can write them in. Then it says, does this pre-tape make sense? <laughs> make sure there is pad at the top and bottom of each pre-tape. Obviously, that's for editing. Roll camera with nobody talking several seconds before and afterwards. 
Here's another bullet bullet point. Tell a story. Make it entertaining. Grab the audience's attention. Have a big finish. So already, from what I've seen, they are violating almost all of these rules and principles. They usually don't make sense. Nobody's telling a story. They're not making it entertaining. No one's attention is grabbed. And there's no big finish to the bit. Now, this TV taping, Jim, this was the first one under Triple H? Well, yes, but again, like we we said on last week's program, I'm not expecting, you know, uh, uh, turning on a dime wholesale changes, you know, in, in 30 seconds notice or whatever. These formats are printed by the production crew and production assistants and all the various minions they've got. And a lot of the, probably this page is on the back of every one of them. And I don't know that triple H when he first took this position said, well, my first order of business is to get these goddamn TV formats in order. Right. So I, I would think we'll see a number of things change, but don't just because it's under his regime the first week, don't assume everybody's going to do this, but there's more. Get single shots when we see talent for the first time. That's why the camera always has to swerve over and see a close-up of them when they walk in, right? Identify talent if the audience doesn't know them. That's a good, a good fucking rule to have. And remember, I've called them out because in a lot of cases, they haven't done it. Or you don't know who the announcer is. It's the first time you've seen someone on camera on that program. Here's one. Talent should not look directly into the camera. I They're don't understand actually, that one at all. I still don't. I, I, I ain't got it either. I've asked numerous times. Can somebody explain it? Well, Vince thinks. Well, what does he think? What well, makes it look phony? Because the person realizes they're on television? Next, rehearse, capital letters, in location with crew and talent or stand-ins. So, hey... We need a guy and a girl for a stand-in for a 30-second fucking pre-tape backstage. Jesus Christ. Be aware of any audio issues in an arena environment. What happened in the last segment? Should the interviewer reference something that just happened? That would be nice if, if it was something shocking. Here's more uh, footnotes or bullet points. Make it real. When have they ever followed that? I was going to say before when you said Vince thinks looking to the camera is phony. That's the part he thinks looks phony? Yeah. Not the droning hostage statement-like delivery of the people who have memorized their pre-scripted lines. Make sure the hallways are not empty. They don't like empty hallways. That that looks staged. They like to see all the fucking guys going over their match <laughs> in the in the fucking back make sure characters have the proper tone in conversation so let me now speak for talent if i'm a talent on your program and you tell me what i'm supposed to be saying to who i'm supposed to be talking to and i know what they've done to me in the past and i can't figure out what the proper tone is i should have fire me and get some new fucking talent. Make sure talent merchandise shirts are not hanging in the background of a locker room. That's another thing. It used to, when they started making merchandise, guys would, would hang their T-shirt over the locker when they were doing a locker room interview to give their T-shirt publicity. And Vince thinks that looks phony because that's obvious we're trying to sell shirts as opposed to the commercials that they air on every program where they're trying to sell shirts. Hit allotted time for shot. That's evergreen. And be cognizant of what talent is in the foreground by determining which talent you want to appear bigger, if any. Those are all pre-tape checklists, bullet points for the writers. And some of that's ridiculous, and some of it's common sense, but it takes up a whole page in this format. 
Would you like to hear about Becky Lynch's interview when she came out with her arm in a sling and switched babyface? Oh, yeah. I'd love to hear what it has in there. What was coming well, out of her mouth for the first time and what was scripted? Well, here's the thing. I don't know if anything was coming out of her mouth because this, this is incredible. They actually have stage directions, Brian. Now, whereas in the old days, we would call Becky in. We said, okay, Becky, obviously you've got this injury and you know what happened at SummerSlam, but we want you to be a baby face. So you guys, you and, and Bianca are going to have mutual respect for each other and you're going to shake hands and then Bailey and the new heels that are going to be menacing you are going to come out and you're going to have a stare down. And we might have suggested a thing or two to say, but otherwise, okay, you know what you did. You know, we've just laid it out for you. Go do it, right? That would have been with anybody. Becky Lynch promo. Everything I do, every choice I make, I want it to be better, bigger than my last. I've never held anything back. Instead, I've used every setback, every broken nose, busted knee, in parentheses, black capital letters, pause, torn shoulder. They're pause. giving stage directions on pauses. She was supposed to say, every broken nose, busted knee, torn shoulder, to motivate me to come back better than ever. When I returned last year at SummerSlam, I chose Bianca Belair as my motivation to come back and be the biggest I ever was, to be big-time Vex. And when she took the Raw Women's Championship from me at WrestleMania, it only made me work harder. So I didn't care if I had to walk out of that SummerSlam ring this year with one arm. I was going to give Bianca everything I had. Did I expect to come out here tonight with my arm in a sling instead of the title over my shoulder? No. But this is only the start of a new comeback story. And you better bet I'm coming back bigger and better than ever. Then there's parentheses and three asterisks. I don't know what this is. This is a thing they didn't do when I was there. But in a lot of cases in these interviews or on this format, there will be at the end of a line, there'll be a parentheses with three, three asterisks in it. I don't know what that in, uh, signifies. And then she continues. So, Bianca, come out here. Let me pay you the respect you deserve and thank you for pushing me to be the B-E-S-T, in parentheses, spelled out. So she didn't just read it as best. Big time Bex I can be. And then pause. Bianca Belair music and entrance. Bianca Belair promo. And I'm not going to read every word of this, but somebody needs to go back and watch this thing and determine how close they were. Because, again, Bianca's promo, I have nothing but respect for Becky Lynch. And a lot of you might be questioning, oh, after, after Becky's left the ring, right? And a lot of you might be questioning how I can feel that way. Trust me, I haven't forgotten the number of times Bex has shaken my hand only to slap me with the other. It's kind of unwieldy. But I've never wanted anything handed to me. The title is only worth the work I put in to keep it, and Becky made me work for it. So I shook Becky's hand after our match at SummerSlam because as much as I was her motivation, she was mine. And it goes on and on until she comes to, because I'm the EST of WWE. That means I'm the greatest, the strongest, the fastest, the toughest. And then here comes Bailey and blah, blah, blah. Every word is written out for them, and and it's actually nobody is this good a highlighter. Every word the and in, in the interview has been highlighted in yellow to make sure that they can read it and study it, and it's been it's automatically highlighted. This is not with a fucking highlighter pen. They have an automatic highlighter. Your your question was this the episode where Carrying Cross returned? Uh, no, I think that was, that was this past, uh, Oh, that was Smackdown. Smackdown, right? That's right. Yeah, no, this was another one of these three hour sojourns, but basically everything is written out in their interview. It's like a script. All those years, I could honestly say wrestling doesn't have scripts. I could never say that again. 
but they leave them their stage direction and parenthetically where to pause. I can't imagine and being a talent and and being asked to do a promo and then being given a page and a half, two pages, and that wouldn't be the bullet points or it wouldn't be, okay, here's the story, put it in your own words. It would be, read this, say this, do this. How the fuck? How could you do that? How could you remember that much dialogue on live television when they make movies, they have take after take after take. The Seth Rollins, or I should say segment three, the Seth freaking Rollins skin ring promo. Scatman Rollins, it's a page and a half single space typewritten. You know, Seth's promo and then the Street Profits music interrupt an entrance. Houston, the Street Profits are up and we want the smoke. Parentheses, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. <laughs> Montez Ford, more, Montez Ford, Montez promo, Montez Ford promo walking to the ring. Couldn't help but hear you ripping on our boy Riddle. And after what you did to him last week and at SummerSlam, you know boy is going to be back someday and he'll be looking for some payback. Seth freaking Rollins promo cutting off Ford. I think the only ones around here that need to face the facts are the two of you. After yet another loss to the Usos, it seems you're just not quite good enough as a tag team to make it to the top of the food chain. And then the Montez Ford promo cutting off Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins promo. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry. Angelo Dawkins promo. <laughs> I know one thing your boys won't fail at, beating your ass to a pulp right now for disrespecting the street profits and a bit of payback for our boy Riddle. Montez Ford promo. Or you could face me one-on-one -on -one right now. Reactions. Dawkins looks at Ford. You got to tell the guy who to look at. There's only three people there. They and, and on on another one here. Who's talking about Champa? This fucking giant multi-page thing. In some other place, the guy's saying, "Wait a minute, hold on. Who was with Champa? May have been Seth." But anyway, the the stage direction is. And I'm talking about this guy. And then in parentheses, points at Champa. You have to give the direction <laughs> to point at the guy that you're talking about and referring to as this guy. No wonder this shit is so bland and boring and phony. They have created a world here where if you could teach a chimpanzee to talk, then all you'd have to do is just hire chimpanzees because everything else is done for them. Not well, but it's done. Well, that was is raw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, 37 pages for this thing. 